Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the College Application Night 2017. Welcome families, welcome seniors. It's great to see you all here this evening. Um, this is such an exciting time for all of you. I know it can be a very nerve-wracking time for all of you. There's probably a lot of questions. You, you know, have a lot of things on your mind. So. We're really going to take the time tonight to delve into that, okay? Um, but before we do that, I just really want to go ahead and introduce the team. But let me start by saying thank you. Thank you so much. We know that there have been some changes this year at the high school with going by grade level. And so that did do some rearranging to the home office structure, to the counseling staff. So we definitely appreciate your support with that. Your flexibility, it means a lot to us. So I am Dr. Nicole Yetter. I am the department chair for guidance and I'm also the senior counselor for A through G. Next to me, we have Mrs. Susan Reichwine. She is the counselor for H through O. We have Mr. Patrick Brett. He is full-time in the College and Career Center. Next to him, we have Mr. Feeney and he is the counselor for P through Z. Next to him, we have Mr. Pete Nicholson and he is the assistant principal in our home office. A through L, and then next to him is Mrs. Amy Lynn, assistant principal P through Z. So that is the restructuring so far. We have some other wonderful people who are here tonight that we'll introduce in just a few minutes. We have Mrs. Uh, Joanne Allender, who some of you may have come in contact with for our transcript office, as well as Mrs. Barbara McElwain. So as we get started tonight, we have a lot of things to cover, some wonderful things to go through. And let me just start to say that this process, as I know, can be an overwhelming one. But that's why we're all here tonight. I remember when my son was here at school, he graduated in 2012, and I had the same questions. How's he going to get through? Where's he applying? What is he doing? Do I have to get everything right? And I work here. So I can just imagine what some of you are feeling. And that's why we're here tonight. We want to really ease that for you. We want to give you the information. You're not only going to hear the information tonight, you all received a pink handout. That really is a step-by-step -step of how this process works. We're really trying to streamline everything for you. As well as this uh, presentation this evening will also be up on the guidance website and will also be a part of Naviance. So we just want to let you know that. So let's get started. Whoops. All right, so what are we going to cover tonight? We're going to co cover admissions. We're going to cover um, NCA eligibility. We're going to cover the college application process. We're going to cover Naviance. I'm sure you've heard all about Naviance over and over again. What is this? What does it look like? What does it sound like? Some of you have been on. I know that a majority of our seniors have been on, create accounts. That's wonderful. If you have not yet done that, you're going to hear about tonight exactly step by step how to do that, OK? So, where should we be now? This is always a great question. Am I too far ahead? Am I too far behind? Am I on target? Look, this is a journey. This is not a race to the finish line, okay? Everyone in this room will have an individual experience. Some of you in this room, you have everything done, completed, you're registered, you're ready to go, you're all set. Some of you may be sitting here saying, I'm not really sure. And that's okay. This is a planning process. This is a step-by-step -step what really works for you. And we'll go over that and how that will work for you. So just keep that in the back of your mind. This is an individual thing. And we're here, you know, in, in to quote the greatest movie ever, High School Musical, we're in this together. That's why we're, we're working with you. That is our plan here as the Senior Home Office, the College and Career Center, and all of you as parents and students, we are collectively working together on this. So as you see at the top here, some things that you may have already completed or in the process of doing. Researched and visited colleges, okay? Great opportunity for you to do that if you have not yet done that. It's a great opportunity for you to do during the school year on days that we have off. Um, if there's an, a day that, you know, we have a holiday or an in-service day or some time, you know, we're hearing from students all the time already. They've been invited to come. That's okay. You bring us something from the college that says that you've gone on a college visit. That's an excused absence. We encourage you to do that. Now, we're not looking for you to take off three times a week, but we are looking for you to go out and explore and see some things. I share with my students all the time, go to the school when kids are there, okay? It's great to visit in the summer and to do that, but if you get the opportunity to be there, because, for example, 
Certain schools look very different. I went to Penn State, it's crowded all the time, you know, whether it's the summer or the winter. However, some schools don't look that way. Westchester looks very different during the school year than it does over the summer. It looks very different on weekends than it does during the week. So that are some things that you'll be investigating what that will look for you. Okay? Also, um, you want to have narrowed down. This is the time to start narrowing down those schools, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Also, the letters of recommendation. And these highlight points that I'm mentioning right now will all be covered more in depth. I'm just giving you an overview of what we're looking at tonight. Also, um, discuss college costs with your families. As I mentioned, we have the College and Career Center. It's open Monday through Friday with evening hours on Wednesday. Great opportunity for your students, as well as for all of you to go students, as well as for your families. And then also signing up for the SAT and ACT if you've not yet done so. And we do have the dates up for you here tonight. So before I turn it on to our following slide, I think this is just a great little reminder. It's not too late. So really, if you walked in here thinking, oh my gosh, we're so far behind, I know someone who's so far ahead of me, it is not too late, okay? There's plenty of time to get everything together that you need, and like I said, we are in this together, we're here to support you, we're here to help you in any way that we can. So at this time, I'm gonna turn over to Mr. Brett. Just as Dr. Yetter said, <clears throat> it's not too late. We're gonna talk about Naviance, and for those of you who have not logged on yet, whether it was either in English class last year or yet this year, please do not worry. This is what the College and Career Center is for. You can come and see me anytime during the school day if you are available, not during business class, not during math class. Please come during a study hall, before or after school, during ninth period, during lunch. I am available, no school period one, no school period eight. Whatever you have available, I will be there except for Wednesday mornings when I'm here till later in the afternoon. So <clears throat> let's talk about Naviance. What should you be doing as a senior? We have many things to do throughout your Naviance career, but you guys are the guinea pigs. You guys are the first year of doing this. So a lot of the things will not be done by you and that's okay. Leave that to your little siblings. Leave that to your neighbors who are gonna take care of that down the road. The first thing you guys wanna do is get onto Naviance, go to the colleges tab and the colleges I'm applying to. This is where it all starts. You can do that before you apply anywhere. And the reason why I say that is because you understand, when you, when you do that, you will see it and understand where to go from there. Should you go to the Common App? Should you go to the, directly to the school or institution? Should you go to the Coalition App? All things I'll touch on later. But if you start at the College I'm Applying To tab, you can really map out your, your plan of action. And that's what Naviance is. It's a map. It's not where you will apply. It's a map, it's a GPS to get you there, not the car that you will drive. Common App, Coalition App, and the school's website, if they have their own application, will be the car that drives you there. You wanna request transcripts? There's two ways to do that. The first way is through Naviance. You will request transcripts through Naviance, and I'll show you how to do that either on here if, if we're able to get some more information or come and see me in the College and Career Center. You also, that pink form that you have, that is how we are going to make sure that we have every student accounted for and track them through this new process. I know it sounds outdated, well it's all online, why are we using a pink form? Why are we still using paper form? Because it's new to us and we want to make sure that nobody slips through the cracks. We want to make sure that everyone has everything taken care of and that they get to where they want to be next year. Requesting letters of recommendation for teachers. I know that there's been a lot of questions. I can't find my teacher. I can't find um, where to go. <clears throat> for a while, the letters of recommendation experience, as Naviance called it, was under construction. There, it was down from July 1st to November, I'm sorry, to September 2nd. It recently opened on September 2nd, and there have been some hiccups but they are working on their end and we are working on ours. Most of the teachers are up and running now and it's for many different reasons. One, loading them to make sure they're active 
and A, making sure they sign on so that you can see them on the list. Very simple, go to the letters of recommendation tab, I'm sorry, the letters of recommendation link under the colleges I'm applying to tab, click on a add a request, drop down box of names, find your teacher, click the schools you want to send to. The reason why I say click the schools you want to send to is because not all schools require letters of recommendation. So if you're applying to Temple or Penn State or Kutztown, Bloomsburg, most of our state schools will not require letters of recommendation. Temple will allow one, but they don't require it. So if you don't feel the need that you need a letter of recommendation to be sent there, you don't have to click it. If all of the schools you're applying to do not need letters of recommendation, then good for you. You don't have to go through that step. But once you do go through that step and you request it, it's out of your hands at that point. It's in the teacher's hand. They will take care of it from there. They will fill out either the form or they will fill out the, the complete letter of recommendation for you and send it from there. Sign up for college visits. This is one of the best parts about Navians that I love. For the students, you, you will understand, you saw last year in sophomore year that colleges would come to our cafeteria. And the rest, other counselors know that we would walk them to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is far from the front of the building. Parents, you, you will understand if you have to walk there. So a new person comes into the building, we walk them all the way back to the cafeteria, say, good luck, let us know if you need anything, and then they have to get back on their own. Also, they throw up a, 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 a sign, a, a, a banner that says their school, and sit and wait for students to come up. Our cafeterias usually have about 1,100 kids per lunch period, give or take. It's intimidating for you as a student to get up and walk to that school and see uh, who, who's looking at me as I walk up to go see this school. Or some students go up, can I have that free pen and take the pen and then go back and sit down. This year we're doing it differently. Every college that has contacted us, we have loaded into Naviance and you can sign up and visit. There is a time when they will come, there is a date. You log on to Naviance, you find the visits, I'll show you where they are. You sign up, you will get a pass from me the morning of the, the visit. Some of the schools I had to put a cap on, Temple, Penn State, uh, Bloomsburg, Shippensburg, some of those schools I had to put a cap on because we send a lot of students to, to those schools. We have a lot of students apply to those schools. So we needed to put a cap on that at 25 because we're having it in the College and Career Center, not in the cafeteria. So we actually had a school here today. Carnegie Mellon was here today. We had seven students come down, which I thought was a great turnout for prior to this meeting. So I'm, I'm very happy that we had students come today. We have Emory Riddle Aeronautical School coming tomorrow. I know it's a niche school, but if you want to come down and just to get some, some information about a school or just to talk to a college rep, it's a great idea to come down and, and have a conversation. Scholarship opportunities will be ongoing throughout the year. We'll talk a little bit more about that. I know parents are very worried about scholarships. There's a lot of myths about scholarships, but I want you to know that they will be posted on Naviance. There will also be other sites where you can find scholarships. That will be ongoing throughout the year, and the schools give you scholarships based on your merit. So this is what Naviance looks like. This is the front page of Naviance. If you can read the blue highlighted what's new, it actually says that Carnegie Mellon is coming Tuesday, September 13th. If you were to log on right now, you wouldn't see that because they already visited this morning. So <clears throat> this, is what it, it, this is a screenshot of it, obviously. It gives you information. It gives you links. You could link to FAFSA. You could link to the NCAA eligibility site. And then there's four tabs above, which I'll show right now. The four tabs are colleges, careers, about me, and my to-do list. So the colleges tab is where it all starts for you if you know where you're applying. If you don't know what you want to do, if you don't know if you want to go to a state school, you want to go to a, a, a private school, you want to go for engineering, you want to go for math, you want to go for counseling, great profession by the way, um, <clears throat> you could go to the About Me tab. There's Strengths Explorers, there's a Career Profiler. If you take those assessments, they work backwards. You take the assessment, they give you a, a, a information about yourself that then goes from the information 
to the career fields for that type of person, to the majors, to the schools that have those majors. So yes, it sounds like it's backwards, but it actually works. It makes sense the way it works. So if you want to go on there and take a look at that, it's 78 questions for the Strengths Explorer. It is very quick. I actually had my cousin take one over the summer because he's in your grade in another state. And the one thing that you need to know about that is please take it seriously. The Strengths Explorer is a licensed exam that we can't reset. I can reset all the other ones for you by myself. But the Strengths Explorer, if I need to reset it, I have to reset it for the entire class. So please take that seriously. Um, <clears throat> let's get back to the Colleges tab. There's a college search piece. If you know what you want to do, if you know the type of school you want to go to, but you don't know the specific school or schools that you want to apply to, do the college search. There's different criteria that you would select within the college search. You can be so broad that it'll give you 3,900 schools. You can be so specific that it'll give you none. So go in, make some changes, and take a, take a college search and see what comes up. Finally, the My Planner. This particular student that we use is a, is a, a fake student. Uh, he doesn't exist, so we, we use him for, for this kind of stuff. There's nothing in the My Planner because he doesn't have anything to do. If you guys were to go into your My Planner and you already have schools that you've listed, you'll see deadlines, you'll see tasks if we assign them. There, your class didn't necessarily have tasks because you're the guinea pigs, but next year the junior class will have resumes that they have to do by the end of the year. So their task will be listed. Um, this, is, this program has a lot to offer, and I don't even think that we really know the full extent of it because we're, we're just getting into it, but I, I do appreciate how everyone is, is being so uh, supportive and so active in getting this off the ground and running. Very quickly, the FERPA. I'm not going to read what that is. The FERPA says that you have the rights to, read, to pr protect your records, your school records. It also means you have the rights to view your records, including letters of recommendation. So if a teacher says, if you ask a teacher to write a letter of recommendation for you, you want to make sure that you either waive your right or don't waive your right to see that letter of recommendation. The common application is going to ask you whether you waive your right, meaning you don't want to see your letter of recommendation, or you do not waive your right, meaning that you want to see it. Colleges will see that. Teachers will see that. That may have an impact on what your, college, what your letter of recommendation says. Teachers aren't going to write a bad letter of recommendation for you, but they may change some things in case you have to see your letter of recommendation. We recommend that you waive your right, but we cannot tell you to waive your right. <clears throat> the college application, the parts of the college application, I talked about the college website, I talked about Common App, and I talked about the Coalition App. There's also going to be your high school transcript, which I'll show, and Mr. Feeney will talk about in a bit, your SAT scores, your secondary report that we, we will fill out as counselors. And, and your resumes and, and everything, your teacher recommendations, everything you've done as a student will be part of your, your, rec, your uh, college application, as well as some other things, what you've done outside of school, your volunteer service, your extracurriculars, that will all be part of your college application. Where can you apply? The Common App. I talked about, I mentioned, you're gonna get, you're gonna get sick of hear, me hear, hearing me say the Common App. The Common App is a school, over 600 schools, it might be over 700 now, all mostly private schools. There's a few public schools on there. I know Millersville's on there, Temple's on there. They will continue to grow. It's one, you know, go in there, fill out one application, add the schools, and, and you can just do one application for a bunch of schools. It's, it's a time saver. You'll then have to pay for your application fees on there as well. The Coalition app is only 90 schools. It's brand new. It's up and running now, and we think that it's a, it's a very good piece for our students to go on if that's offered for that school. It can give you a locker that you can put information towards and colleges can see that as well, a little bit more than what the Common App can do. But again, there's only 90 schools on there and um, it's brand new. We don't really know how effective it's going to be. Also, the individual college will be great for you to go to. There's many schools that do not use the Common App or do not use the Coalition App. You'll need a lot of information to put onto your 
common app to put onto your application, wherever it may be. This is some of the application information that you'll need. Um, if you don't have your social security number, not the biggest deal, sometimes they use that to defer between students for the same name. Also, sometimes they use that for financial aid. Your GPA, your class rank, you, all, you can report that, but we will also send that through your transcript. Use your full name. You don't want to use your nickname. And make sure you write down your usernames and passwords because you don't want to forget them and have to go back in and, and call somebody at the school. There's rolling admissions. I'm not going to read everything to you guys, but there's rolling admissions, which is simply that you would hear back from them shortly. Many schools are rolling admissions. Um, I know that LaSalle University, where I went, was rolling admissions, and I heard back within six weeks. This was 12 years ago, but I heard back within six weeks. Apologize. The regular decision, which will be a deadline, and they'll let you know when the deadline is. They take all of them at once, and they send them out. Early action is non-binding, but you can hear back earlier. People say that, oh, it's an easier chance to get in. That, that's a myth. I don't necessarily think that's true. An early decision as well, you'll hear back quicker, but that is binding. Early decision means that you are 110% going to that school. To me, what I would say is that that's the school I've wanted to go to since I can remember. For me, it would have been Notre Dame. They would have laughed at my tr transcript, but it would have been Notre Dame. So that's a school that if you really, really want to go to, they have everything you want. It's a complete college math. Yes, you can do early decision, but again, Make sure that it's binding. If you're accepted, early decision, every single other application you fill out is completely void. So when should I apply? Now through November. You can start applying. I have had many students in my office in the College Career Center every single day working on their applications. I see many faces here tonight, which is great. They've been working on their applications. They know what they're doing, yet they're still coming out to gather more information. Come on down, work on your application, ask questions, that's why I'm here. Parents, you can help, you can come on Wednesday nights or during the school day if you're available, and we can set up a meeting and walk you through it. Um, <clears throat> colleges will have certain deadlines, or they open up at a certain time. So obviously now all the applications are open, but some of them have, have, were not open to start the school year. And I'm gonna turn this over now to Mr. Feeney. All right, good evening. Um, again, my name is Mr. Sam Feeney. My uh, student caseload is letters P through Z in Home Office F40. As we're looking at all these different pieces, how many of you have had a, a child go through North Penn before this year and went through the college application process? Okay, a number of you. Can you come up here? No, I'm just kidding. Um, think about this a little bit. For some of you, you might be asking, okay, well, why are we doing all this? It seems, you know, uh, Mr. Brett talked about, there, there's a built-in redundancy to it. I think that's really important because we want to make sure that these steps are in place, but also a lot of times students will come to us and, and they'll kind of misunderstand a little bit of, of what Navience is in terms of its role. It really is, if any of you guys do online banking, uh, there's like a virtual wallet or Mint or eMoney, any of those things, that's a way to, to get the whole landscape. And what it really does, the thing that's most effective for it, and parents, hopefully you can appreciate this, they put your kid in the driver's seat more of managing the application process. It's an awareness, it's, an, it's a, a checkpoint of accountability, make sure all these steps are, are being taken care of. And so I'm gonna jump into a couple of the discrete steps that we're asking students to do as we go through this. But just so you know, we're, we're saying you're gonna, you're gonna take a step and then you're gonna be able to manage it. And, and what, we're, uh, what Mr. Brett's alluding to as well, if you have not had a student apply to college th through here before, a lot of times when we get to a recommendation or a transcript, the student gives a paper request or emails a teacher or whatever the conversation, and then they just hope. I hope they send it, like I don't, I don't know, I can't tell. And, and this is really gonna give you a lot of peace of mind to know, hey, this hasn't been sent yet, now you know who to go pester. Or, all right, I can wait, because we don't need it until a certain point in time. But that's what I think really can be most helpful about Navience and being able to walk through this process. As I go through these checkpoints, you should be able to on the back of your pink form, or the front if that's what you're looking at, um, you should be able to follow almost, I'm going to go almost point by point down because this is our process as we go through this. So we're going to talk now about the transcript. The transcript represents your GPA, your class rank, um, and also it lists all of your courses. 
when we report this, just so you're aware, when we, we report your transcript, your GPA, we, look, we report the weighted GPA, which is out of six. Your unweighted GPA out of four is listed as well, but our weighted GPA informs our class rank, so that's kind of why we're, we're doing it that way. You're going to request when you're looking at, you're loading your colleges you're applying to, you're going to request which one uh, and the transcripts for each. And then, as Mr. Brett said, on this pink form, uh, you can hand this in or get another one in the transcript office. Mrs. Allender will be able to receive that. We want to build in this, this redundancy of paper and electronic because if you think, hey, I've requested my transcript, I'm good to go, deadline passes and the school contacts you and says, where's your stuff? you're scrambling and, and it gets a little bit messy. So if you can walk through this, these parallel processes, you'll find everything's gonna be covered through this as we go. So uh, you'll have a, a couple things that you'll see that aren't on the transcript that you'll wanna make sure you include in your application. Uh, include basically things that happen outside of your academic class day. We don't really list community service stuff or clubs uh, with, with very few exceptions as you go through that. Um, and the one thing we're going to ask as well, and this is also on your pink form, is that you are aware of the deadlines. Mr. Brett noted that you would like to, we'd like you to apply by the end of November. It's a great way to spend Thanksgiving after whatever lousy football games are on. You can go work on your applications. But that allows us enough time to process all of those. If you can imagine, you know, a, let's say about 100 to 200 kids in the last two weeks of November, we have to get all of those out by that January 1 deadline. So please allow us at least 15 school days uh, from the time when you are uh, wanting to apply and, and then when the actual application needs to be sent on our end. One thing to note as well is, as I said before, this is sort of a parallel process. So when you're lining up your schools and Navient, so you're saying, okay, I'm requesting this, I'm requesting teacher recommendations, and we'll talk about that in a sec. You can still be working on your college application and you don't have to have already completed your college application in order to do these steps. So you have four or five moving parts. You've got your transcript, letters of recommendation, your application, whatever else it is you're working on, your essays. Those can be working simultaneously and Navient is how you track those and kind of send them on their way. So okay, I requested transcripts, Mrs. Allender's doing her thing. I requested my teacher recommendations, you know, uh, Mr. Kolb's doing his thing and I've got you know, the pastor of my church is doing his thing and, the, you know, they're good to go. And I can, you know, I can now be sitting, I'm working on my essay in my English class, and then I have to sit down and be putting in all of my data. So, again, looking at managing the whole process, this should really pull a lot of things together. Oops. All right, so that's what a transcript looks like. You can get one of these, uh, an unofficial transcript, uh, through the transcript office with Mrs. Allender. These will all also be automatically uploaded. Uh, into Navient upon your request for that. This is also, these are also very handy when you are, are coming to the scholarship time. We, when we wrap around college application time, start looking at scholarships, you're gonna be sending out transcripts to scholarships as well. They're gonna want official transcripts, not just photocopies of what you have. And so again, that will be, uh, that can be requested through Mrs. Allender in the transcript office. All right, test scores. You may report your test scores on Navient. Some of you already have. But the schools that you're applying to are going to want the validity of them coming from the actual testing body. So that's from ACT, student.org, or collegeboard.org, depending on which test you've taken. They are pretty clear on their rules, kind of what, which um, testing reports are included in, in the fee, and then which you'll need to pay extra for, and so on. Uh, again, really just kind of be aware of how you're setting these things up and who you're putting, who you're putting into communication with. Uh, with the, between the school and the testing body. We have some dates listed up there. The ACT, uh, we do not offer here. Uh, however, we do offer the uh, SAT at North Penn all the time. ACT does test at local schools. So if you're interested in that test instead, my general philosophy on standardized testing is if, if the school requires it, do it, and pick whichever one makes you look good. So hop on to either one of those sites. You can take pra practice tests if you're still looking to get some of your testing done at this point in time. All right, letters of recommendation. Question a lot of students often have is why? Why do I need a letter of recommendation? What's the purpose? How do they fit together? You have to remember, schools don't ask for things that they aren't interested in. All right, they, they have admissions counselors. You know, a school like Penn State has upwards of 100,000 applicants a year. They're not looking for more work, all right? They, they, really, they really factor in each of these. And you'll find the schools that you're looking for, very often, 
the application process will be reflective of what they're looking for in a school. So uh, a school like Chestnut Hill wants a ton of paper. They want letters of recommendations and then picture your dog. Like they want as much as they want to know you as a person. Penn State wants your GPA, class rank, and SAT, and that's it. Uh, so I think they need an essay too, but it's, it's very different in that way. So understand really the purpose behind the letter of recommendation, what it's doing. It's, it's rounding out you as a person. Especially, as I said, at smaller schools, they're really looking to, to see, are you going to contribute to what we're building here as a school culture? And so to that end, when you're thinking about your letter of recommendation, think about who can shed light on a certain element of who you are in, in a way that is going to be different than he was in my class, he got an A, he's a good student. That's on your transcript, right? The, the, the grades are there. What, what can someone say or who can say something about you that's just a little bit different? And so that's why a lot of times, obviously teacher recs are built in, but if you are active in your church, if you are active in a civic organization like Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, if you have been working in a place for a long period of time or you volunteer or had an internship, those types of people who would have overseen you or supervised you, they can really say, hey, you know what? This is a kid who, you know, he always showed up on time. You know, he, he, was, he went above and beyond to help our customers. Or whatever it is, that tells a lot to a school about how you're going to treat their professors, how you're going to treat your classmates anyway. So as you're looking at this whole thing, the letters of recommendation, uh, that's, I would put some thought into who you're asking, not, just, not necessarily just this is the person I got the best grade in uh, in their class. And so just some things about the, the letters of recommendation. Again, as Mr. Brett said, if, if they don't, if the school doesn't ask for any, frankly, don't bother sending them because they're just going to chuck them because they, they're not asking because they're probably overloaded with all the things that they, they have to process. So talked a little bit about whom you should ask and then how to request. Teachers can be requested through Naviance, through the drop down there, and then you can actually just ask your community member, whomever, um, and that can be sent to the college itself. So the essay, all right, as a former English teacher here at North Penn High School, I, I drew the short straw and I get to talk about the essay. So here we go. Um, the essay, what you need to know about this, this, is, this falls in line in, in one of two categories for your application. One is they want to know that you can write well. Uh, one kind of added, uh, I guess, writing sample, in some cases is your SAT writing a sample from your test. If you took the SAT, the writing part is optional. I highly recommend it. Uh, so because they actually your school will actually get a photo copy a PDF of your essay So it's a, and it's an additional writing sample see how you can write uh, in crunch time When you're when you're looking at your essay You're gonna look for the essay that you can either write most passionately about or can write with the greatest quality Because sometimes there's there's personal stuff and then sometimes there's a you know Take a stand on an issue or you know come up with an idea whatever that might be uh, and then there are a number of checks that we have in place. Uh, a lot of English teachers use the college essay or have the college essay as the first writing assignment after the summer reading. Uh, as well, we have resources in D18, which is uh, a, a lunch study room right outside of the cafeteria. You can drop in and if there's an English teacher there, you can ask them to review your essay. So you can get multiple eyes on your essay, make sure it's answering the question and then being able to, uh, being able to be clearly communicated. All right, so we're gonna review the steps just uh, as we go through this process. You're going to, again, this is just right on your, right on your pink sheet. Uh, you have your, your parent release of records form. You're gonna sign off on that. That's a formal uh, request for transcript. You're gonna complete your college application, requesting tra transcripts and recommendations through Naviance, send your test scores, and then review the college website. Anything else, what else are they asking for? Um, I know Pitt's one where they don't ask for a formal essay, they ask for three essays, combined total 500 words, which is really short. Now we're like, hey, I should apply to Pitt. But, uh, but just so you know, like there's a, individual schools do things differently, so you have, you have to be aware of those components. Um, and the thing that really triggers all of this if you're applying to a Common App school, is making sure that you're linking Naviance and Common App. Na Naviance will prompt you to do this, but when you link Naviance and Common App, then everything gets automatically sent. They're really starting to work together, and that's, that can be really helpful to you as well. Um, so if you have questions as we go through this about what the process is, follow the sheet, but if you're having to say, well, okay, I know what to do, how do I do that? That can be a great place for you to review this presentation. I'm sure you're going to be inviting friends over on Friday night and watching it together. But um, you could also be uh, emailing your counselor or Mr. Brett to 
uh, to be able to ask specific questions. I'm going to hand it back to Mr. Brett. Uh, he is going to be able to give you some insight. If you are looking to play sports in college, he's going to be able to, to share with you some really important stuff about NCAA. How many of you students are involved in extracurricular activities, whether it be outside of the school or inside of the school? How many of you play a sport for our school and wish to play at the next level? If you wish to play at the next level, divisions one or two, you must go through the NCAA Eligibility Center. There's a website, go to ncaaeligibilitycenter.org. You have to create an account, fill out an application. There, fill out, it's not so much an application, just information about yourself. There's a fee. If you need help with the fee, let me know. Come see me in the College and Career Center. This governs all athletics within the, all academics within the athletic realm of the high school, of the college level. Make sure you have a correct GPA and SAT to be able to play a sport at the next level. If you have any questions, please come down and see me. I'm not going to speak about it a ton because there's only a, a whole, there's only a handful of students in our building who, who really need this. But if you have any questions, please let me know. If you need to use the SATs for this, the code is 9999, and the College Board, I'm sorry, the NCAA Clearinghouse will get that. And I'm going to turn this over to our resident mom. Mrs. Susan Reichwein. Thank you. Hi, the resident mom. You can tell which straw that I picked, right? Well, um, I'm Mrs. Reichwein. I inherited the senior class last names H through O. So if your child falls into that, I am responsible. You know where to find me at 40. I'm not going anywhere. One of the things that I wanted to share with you is that I have been on the other side sitting where you are. And I currently have one that just went to college, two more that are in the middle of doing all their Naviance paperwork as junior and a sophomore. And I have spent countless hours the last two years navigating through the website. So while I am not a resident expert, I can tell you once this system is up and running, it could be the greatest thing since sliced bread. I would leave there from where my kids were, doing their work, overseeing their applications, doing their resumes, updating all the questionnaires, college visits, and then I'd come here, and I'd get hit with a ton of paper, and processes, and postage, and somebody turned it in, and they didn't get it, and boy, it was crazy. So again, really, really supportive uh, from all of you just helping work through this process with us as we implement that going through. Now, how many are sitting here saying, I've heard all this information, I have a ton of questions? Go ahead, raise your hands. Because really, if we, if we got through all that information and you guys are like, yes, we got this, well, that's great for us. But I know even sitting listening, having all the background information, I look at that and I say, yeah, I have some questions, but so there's some general things that we can talk about in a moment, but one of the things I wanted to touch on was, if you haven't done it yet, I encourage you to sit down with your son or daughter, get on the website, walk through, navigate, click on the links, go to the four tabs that Mr. Brett talked about in the beginning, the about me, the careers, the colleges, the other pieces, spend a little bit of time on that. You don't need a lot, it's very user friendly. Then once you start the process, follow that yellow, the uh, pink sheet, the information step by step in the back. You want to go through that. If you have any bumps in the road, any glitches, you can call any one of us or go down and see Mr. Brett in the College and Career Center. Okay, so it is a lot of information. It is new. We are going to continue to work through with all the process and glitches as we go. Thank you. And um, at that point, Hopefully by the time we're through this season, as we call it, and we get through most of the deadlines, um, everyone will have a better comfort level as we go through the process. So the last thing I wanted to touch on here are the save the dates. So as you may or may not know, this Thursday is back to school night. Make sure that you know your child's first period, 
or as seniors, if they don't come in for a first period, you want to know their second period, if they have a no-school period one or unscheduled. So you want to be able to show up there. October 4th, financial aid night. October 7th is the deadline for the November sitting of the SAT. That's the registration deadline. So you want to make sure that you're aware of that and you get on the website and hit that. And also on the 13th, we have Montgomery County College Fair here at North Penn. So if you have questions, you'd like to come out, take a look, speak to some representatives, that would be a wonderful re resource for you to take advantage of. I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Yetter, and thank you again for coming. Thank you so much. Well, that was a lot of information, not going to lie. We know it's a lot. We want you to take it in. We want you to take leave here tonight and think about some things, some questions. I know the time is of the essence, and we are more than, you know, we would love to welcome some general questions. We would ask that if you do have specific individual questions, students, if you have individual questions, or parents, please come make an appointment with us or give us a call, because we want to give you that individual attention. It may not be applicable to everybody, but if you have a general question about tonight, we'll be more than happy to answer it this evening. If not, pick up the phone, call us. Students come by the home office, stop by the College and Career Center. Like I said, we're navigating this together. We're all trying to figure it out together. It's a really streamlined process. We're really excited about it, and we're here to help and, be, and work together as a team. So we really appreciate that. I have a question that I forgot to integrate into my uh, presentation, Mrs. Curley. So your question about, I'm really good at reading minds. Mrs. Curley, you have a question. So your question is, if I want to get a recommendation from my counselor from last year, who is not currently my counselor, I don't think there's any chance that you currently have your counselor who you had last year, but um, you may, you would still list your counselor as they are this year, and then you can reach out to your, to the, to counselor from last year via email and just copy your current one and say, are you willing to write my recommendation? Uh, let's say you have Dr. Getter now and you want me to write your, your letter of recommendation. You would send me an email, copy Dr. Getter on it, and then I would write the, I would write the letter of recommendation, forward it to Dr. Getter, and she can upload it. So we, in terms of keep, keeping continuity from previous years, if you had your counselor for a couple years, that's one question that uh, we'd like to make sure you know we're communicating with each other so that your processes are consistent that way. And that's across the board from someone you would have had maybe in your sophomore or junior year. So it doesn't have to be one of us up here. So all the counselors are willing to do that. So please ask whoever you are the most comfortable with. Are there any general questions? Yes. That is a great question. The question was, would you do that through Naviance? The answer is no. You'll use Naviance for the letters of recommendation for the teachers. If you would like a counselor, your previous counselor, you will ask them directly. You can drop them an email. I personally believe you should stop in and see them, have a face-to-face -to, -face to ask them, drop off a resume, and ask them in person. They will then write it, and they will get it to us. They're not listed in the teacher section. Sometimes they're listed there, but that's not how we're going to do it. You're going to ask the counselor directly. Thank you for the question. I'm just going to jump on that real quick since I have all new students as well. It is important that when you fill out the information, you fill out the information to one of the three of us that you are assigned to this year. We are responsible for sending your information out, whether or not we had you before or not. So if you're H2O, you, you have to use me. That's the information you put in. Okay? So. Just a clarification, you are using the counselor you are assigned to this year. However, you may ask whomever you are most comfortable with. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, yes. On Naviance Common App, it will be one of us. It will not be, even if you're asking Mrs. Pike, who was your counsel last year, if you're asking her to write that letter of recommendation, she will not be able to upload any of your information. You will only solely be able to request, like through Common App, through Naviance, one of us. We're automatically assigned. There is no getting around that because we're responsible to have that all done. Oh, yes. Um, when you're asking someone to write the letter of recommendation, whether it's another counselor, a teacher, a community member, someone you work for, please provide them with 
um, an academic and an extracurricular resume so that they can highlight the wonderful things about you. They may only know you in one capacity. Your teacher may know you in English class. However, they want to be able to highlight all the wonderful things that you do. So give yourself credit for that. Go back as far as about ninth grade. That's about as far as you want to go back unless you've been doing something your whole life. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts from an early age, that's one thing to include. But really, everything else, your volunteer, your work experience, um, participating in clubs, organizations, just go back to about ninth grade, okay? And list all those wonderful things. Ms. Velasic, yes. Can you upload a resume through Naviance? Yes. Yes, you can. There is a resume builder on there that you can utilize. Yes, there is. Or you can Google one yourself and pick your own. Some of you may already have a resume completed. That's fine. Yes. That's correct. She cannot upload one that she's already created outside of the system. However, she can email it or send it to, to, someone, to whoever she's asking. That's correct. Yes. So they gave them to you in a written form. So what we've asked the teachers to do is um, they have that as a Word document saved to still upload that live one. So she still has requested through, Nav your child, even though if they got them in their hand, still ask them to request through Naviance. I know, I'm asking them if you've already done that. So if your child has, if you students or your child has already gone to the teacher and asked, they still need to request them through Naviance because that teacher won't know to take that written one. She may have it in hand, but it needs to be uploaded because schools want it electronically. They don't want it in a paper form. We're not mailing them. Okay? And then they can just upload it. It's not a problem. And if they can't upload it, they didn't save it, we'll scan it and upload it ourselves. We will take care of it. We will not let them go to the side, not to worry. Yes, in the back. Great question. It is not going to be FAFSA. We're going to bring someone in for FAFSA to go over that. The financial aid night is an independent contractor that's coming in to solely go over financial aid opportunities for you. Yes. Great question. Once you um, ask your teachers and you requested them and they're uploaded, do you have to do anything else? No. Once you do your part, that's your part. Your job as students is to watch deadlines. That's your responsibility. So if you know that you're applying and it's, you know, it's a November 1, it's a November 15th, it's a December 1, that's your responsibility applying to college, okay? It's then our responsibility to do all the other pieces, the transcripts, the recommendation, and whatnot. Now, students always say, well, are you going to get it done before, before the deadline? We try our very best. However, schools understand that. They know that we're dealing with 1,100 seniors. That's OK. The deadline is your deadline. It's not North Penn's deadline. It's the student who's applying. It's your deadline to get your information in, OK? So just know that. Yes. Absolutely. The question was, can you go ahead and start applying to college if you're taking the SAT or ACT again? Absolutely, yes. You should absolutely get started and send everything. That's perfectly fine because they come directly from that institution. They do not come from us. We do not send test scores. It comes directly from that organization. Perfectly fine. So you want to still make sure you get your deadline. So absolutely. And they can come later. Yes. That's a great question. The question was, what if we're asking someone that's not on Naviance in North Penn? Do you want to answer? Yeah. Sure. So we've had this question Same. a lot. We have student, people from either the middle school or outside and in community organizations. The easiest thing for them to do is to email it to either the counselor, record, or myself, and we'll put it right on the Naviance. We'll do it. We have teachers who retired last year who have already written letters of recommendation who gave them to me before they left. And I will upload those letters of rec to Naviance. 
We'll take care of that for you. Absolutely. Great questions. Yes. You should really wait till you actually applied to those schools. Once you do through Navions, if you just start listing schools that you may or may not, um, we're going to get a little confused when Mrs. Allender processes everything because we keep a database of where you actually applied. We report that. So that could get a little confusing if you list a whole bunch of schools and then go, uh, oh, I don't really think I'm going to. That's really schools. You can always add to the list. We have students do that all the time. They list two or three student things and then, oh, I want to introduce. Yeah. They, sometimes, you know, you apply to two or three schools and then a couple weeks later, you applied a few more. So you can always come back. And I, really quick, I just want to introduce, I'm going to embarrass them and make them stand real quick, just so you can put a name to the face. Front and center, Mrs. Joanne Allender. We can't do it without her. She's there. Be kind to her when you see her come in. She's there all hours. She's helping with the transcripts. It's, it's great. Also working with her. It's Ms. Barbara McElwain. She's fantastic. She, they work together. They do transcripts, registrations, everything that we need, records. It's fantastic. And also, I want to acknowledge our counseling intern, Ms. Kim Culp. She's fantastic. She assisted with helping put our presentation together. So we love having her here as well. Um, so that's been great, too. All right. Any last questions before we wrap up? We have, yes. This presentation is going to be available online. Uh, we have the wonderful Mrs. Fakish. Thank you so much for filming it this evening in the back. And our AV department who's been here, this will be uh, linked to our website as well with the audio and the video. And we're going to have it um, through, through Naviance as well. All right. With that, thank you so much for coming. This is a great turnout. We're excited. Thank you.